Considering South Park has been on the air for 25 years and has produced over 200 episodes, it should really be no surprise that a feature-length movie of the show exists. It's something that you would expect to happen at some stage for a show that's been as popular and successful as South Park has. However, what is surprising is that the movie got its theatrical release less than two years into the show's run. South Park Bigger, Longer and Uncut was officially released in theatres in June 99, less than two years after the show's pilot episode first aired. So why did South Park jump into making a feature-length movie so early in its run, considering it would continue to produce episodes for another 25 years and counting? Let's take a look at some of the reasons for the movie's early release, and how its production would actually change the course of the show's future, and have a huge impact on the type of show South Park would become known as today. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. That movie has warped my fragile little mind. When South Park first aired in that summer of 97, it made an immediate impact and quickly became a pop culture phenomenon. This show that centred around a group of 10 year olds who cursed like sailors, felt like nothing seen before on television. And its ratings reflected its growing popularity, quickly becoming Comedy Central's highest rated show and helping the network to become one of the fastest growing cable channels at the time. South Park was everywhere in late 90s pop culture, from an extensive range of merchandise to instantly recognisable catchphrases. I'm a cop, and you will respect my authority! However, as popular as the show was at the time, it certainly never felt like a show with the potential to be around for such a long time that it would still be on the air a quarter of a century later. The majority of television shows don't even make it past their first season, and with South Park's instant success, Comedy Central knew it had something of a gold mine on its hands. And so with the show in the middle of its first season, show creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone were offered a contract to not only continue producing more episodes until 1999, but also a feature-length movie, with an emphasis on the film being produced as soon as possible, with the show still at the peak of its popularity. We've got to see this movie, dude. However, by the time production began on the movie, South Park was in the middle of its second season and contracted to run for just one more year, with critics' reaction to season two far less enthusiastic compared to season one. Trey Parker and Matt Stone have said they began to take a far less hands-on approach to the show's production in season two, delegating much of the writing duties as they simultaneously worked on other projects. The father is somebody in this room. The father is... Mrs. Cartman. <gasps> What? On the audio commentary for Bigger, Longer and Uncut, Parker and Stone gave an insight into their mindset at the time of the movie's production, suggesting that they felt it would more than likely be the show's swan song, with season 3 due to finish airing just a few months after its release. But what happened was, this movie happened after that second year when everyone was just like, it was basically over, and we even thought it was, we thought South Park was done. I mean, we are like, okay, well we had our run. We really thought we were going to get the six and that would be it, so right. we thought, oh, we lasted two years, that's pretty good. So with the production of the movie beginning with the mindset that it could be a final farewell, Trey Parker and Matt Stone were determined that the South Park movie wouldn't just feel like a regular episode stretched over 90 minutes. And if the movie was to be the beginning of the end for South Park, then it was going to go out with a bang, and they would approach the film's production from a more creative perspective. Unbeknownst to the studio, Parker and Stone had decided that Bigger, Longer and Uncut would be a musical. Now while the show's successful use of music is something that South Park would become known for in later years, with Parker and Stone even going on to produce their own Broadway musical, at the time turning the South Park movie into a musical was an incredibly bold move, with Paramount Pictures fighting the idea every step of the way. The fact that the film was a musical was kept a secret right throughout its promotional campaign, and so audiences only discovered that Bigger, Longer and Uncut was indeed a musical when they sat down with their popcorn to watch the movie's opening scene. And what a bloody good musical it is. Honestly, looking back, the music in this film is truly incredible and can really hold its own against most critically acclaimed musical features. From the opening number Mountain Town, True to Blame Canada, the Les Miserables homage, and arguably the musical's greatest work, I Can Change, a parody of a Disney princess number performed by Satan lamenting his unhealthy relationship with Saddam Hussein. Who's my cream pub? I am. That's my buddy. Honestly, it's difficult to watch this film and not have its music stuck in your head for days after. Trey Parker and Matt Stone may have had to fight every step of the way to keep it as a musical, however the battle proved worthwhile as the movie's soundtrack received critical acclaim, with Blame Canada even being nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Song, 
with a live version performed on stage by Robin Williams. The plot of the movie revolves around the boys sneaking in to see an R-rated Terence and Philip movie. When the parents of South Park see the impact the movie has on the children, they form a censorship movement titled Mothers Against Canada, which quickly spirals out of control and leads to armed conflict between the United States and the country of Terence and Philip's birth. Oh boy, military action, Ned! Let's kill us some goddamn Australians! I think we're fighting Canadians. Although elements of the plot are influenced by the season 1 episode Death, much of the storyline mirrors and satirizes the real life battle that Trey Parker and Matt Stone had with the MPA throughout the production of Bigger, Longer and Uncut. With the pair growing increasingly frustrated with early cuts of the movie being awarded an NC-17 rating from the association, conflicting with Parker and Stone's original agreement with Paramount Pictures for an R-rated movie. Although the movie would eventually meet the requirements to have its rating downgraded from NC-17 to rated R, the duo's frustration with some of the absurd requests from the MPA are fantastically incorporated into the movie's plot. It is going to take us weeks to erase the damage this film has done to our children! Terence and Philip were first introduced to South Park as a satirical response to those who accused the humour in the show of being the equivalent of fart jokes. Did you hear that, Terence? I farted! You did, just now! <laughs> So for the South Park movie's plot to be based around the release of a Terence and Philip movie was a pretty clever way to satirise any criticism the film might receive. Horrific, deplorable violence is okay, as long as people don't say any naughty words. Without doubt, Bigger, Longer and Uncut was considered both a critical and financial success, receiving positive reviews at the time and grossing over $80 million worldwide on a production budget of just $21 million and was the highest grossing R-rated animated feature until 2016 when it was surpassed by Sausage Party. However, arguably the movie's biggest success is the way that it shaped the future of South Park and set a standard that the show would uphold in the following years. As mentioned earlier, at the time of the movie's production, Trey Parker and Matt Stone were of the opinion that the show was more than likely nearing the end of its run. However, not only would the movie not signal the end of the show's run, it would in fact signal the beginning of a new era for South Park. When analysing the first two seasons of South Park, I think it's fair to say that in the grand scheme of the show's 25-year run, those early seasons are far from its best. The show was certainly finding its feet, and much of the humour in those early episodes tended to rely on shock value, lacking much of the clever social satire that the show would eventually become known for. What's interesting when looking at the show's timeline is that an upturn in the show's quality can be seen almost immediately following the release of the South Park movie. Bigger, Longer and Uncut was released in June 99, right in the middle of Season 3, which was split into two parts. Trey Parker has referred to Season 3 as a turning point for South Park, and when assessing the season, there's certainly an upturn in the quality of episodes, particularly in the second half of the season after the movie's release. By the following year, Season 4, the show has definitely found its feet, with a strong emphasis on satirical humour and the subtle social commentary that South Park arguably does better than any other show. From this point forward, the show would embark on a run of seasons often considered the show's golden age, containing some of South Park's most memorable episodes and moments. It feels as though a lot of the foundations for what would make South Park so successful in these years are laid down in the production of the movie, really pushing beyond anything the show had done previously. So rather than the movie signalling the beginning of the end for South Park as expected, it would instead signal the beginning of a new era in the show's history. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the South Park movie, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to help it grow.